Okay, <clears throat> we're going to uh, cover now uh, remote control uh, switches. Uh, these have dimming capability, on, off. These are for black and white. Uh, sorry, black and white. One color lights, LED lights. They operate from 12 to 24 volts according to their specifications. Um, they come in a variety of different configurations. So uh, in this particular configuration, it's a uh, remote control. Um, these actually have the battery in them with a seal on it and uh, it comes with a uh, open-ended um, cable. You can also buy them uh, with uh, terminations already on them and these are uh, barrel connectors already uh, on the end of the cable. You can see that uh, they're both uh, listed here at um, 12 amps of uh, current is their peak output. That conflicts with the uh, instructions which uh, state that the uh, maximum output is in fact 6 amps. So um, yeah, now I can tell you that uh, do not short the LED output. This may lead to permanent damage. Yeah, did that once and uh, it led to a meltdown and a short and permanent damage. So um, do heed that warning. Uh, if you uh, develop a short in your system, uh, these things will rapidly melt. Um, we had a, 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 a piece of uh, the copper, the, the flexible LED uh, cracked. Uh, when it uh, broke, it was at a solder joint. It uh, flipped over, hit the other side, and shorted out the line. What had happened is we were putting in some molding, the vibration uh, was the final straw. It actually caused the uh, fracture. And uh, when we came back up, we noticed the LED wasn't, the dimmer wasn't working. Uh, upon touching it, we almost burned our fingers and um, found out that these things uh, do go first. So this, uh, they clearly state here, do not short. And uh, apparently they're aware that uh, if short develops, um, they're gonna go first. And what ultimately happened is the electronics caused the, uh, the uh, insulation to melt. It actually bonded to the board and <clears throat> caused this uh, permanent short. Now, uh, your power supply is supposed to protect you. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that later. But the uh, power supply um, didn't protect us. The uh, ground fault tripped first. And uh, we hadn't put the fuses in yet because uh, one thing I'm doing is putting fuses in everything to just cover yourself. So uh, you have to decide, are they 12 amp or are they 6 amp? I can tell you that I'm running uh, 9 amp on my front lights and it's working fine. Although what I did do is um, I took these high quality leads and um, I took them off. I cut open the unit, I uh, took the leads off and uh, put in some uh, real 18 gauge wiring um, to the board just to be consistent with what everything I was doing. So you can see here, uh, this is, that's probably about a 24 gauge, <laughs> they're pretty small. But um, yeah, so any other than that though, great features and uh, very flexible. So let's get some of these hooked up and see what we can do. I have here four LED remote controls. Uh, you can see three of them right here and one right here that has the <coughs> barrel connectors already on. Currently, uh, all of these lights work off the same remote control. And if you're putting more than one of these in a house, <clears throat> that's not necessarily desirable. So we're going to go over how to reprogram them, and then we're going to go over um, the one keystroke that can wipe out all your work. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, as I said, all of these are being controlled by one. And we're going to start by reprogramming them to these other remotes that I have on the table. So the first thing we do is we're going to disconnect the three lights on the left. And we're going to leave just this one uh, white controller online right here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to unplug the white controller. And uh, we're going to plug it in. And then we're going to press the speed, plus and minus. So we have control of just that one. Now if I plug in another one, we should hopefully find, uh, and he has control of that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the, unplug the white one. We're going to go to this next one. We're going to plug it in. We're going to press the speed plus minus. We saw it blink once. This one no longer has control. He controls himself. We'll plug the original in. And if we're lucky, uh, the two of them continue to have their own control. So he controls one. 
he controls two, and three and four aren't doing anything. So now we're going to unplug the first two, and we're going to plug in the third one, and we're going to plus the speed plus minus, it beep blinked once, we'll test that the others don't turn it on, we'll plug in number two, we'll plug in number one, and number one turns this one on and off, number two turns that one on and off, number three turns that one on and off. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do the fourth one. We'll unplug one, two, and three. We're going to go ahead and plug in number four. And we're going to go ahead and press speed plus minus. He blinked once. So number four works. Number three doesn't control him. Number two doesn't control him. Number one doesn't control him. So we'll plug the others back in. And what we should find is that we have uh, each controller on its own uh, remote which they are. So that seemed like an awful lot of work, right? Um, and you got, a, you got a good result in the end. So um, you saw the procedure I followed, and you kind of have to kind of make sure you, you follow that, that nothing else is plugged in. Your problem is this, that uh, these are really, really good. And in order to give you this demonstration, I had to go around and unplug every unit in my house. And the reason is, uh, these are... Uh, RF remote controls, and we're pressing the speed plus, speed minus. But uh, because they're radio frequency, they have really good range. Uh, when I run my garage, um, I can go across the street and uh, press the remote control and control the brightness on the garage. Um, it's, a, it's a great feature. I mean, you can 100% dim them. Uh, each one of these has uh, you know its own control. So the problem is this. I pick up one remote control, and you can see it's running. I didn't unplug anything or plug it in, and I press the speed plus minus, and watch what happens. One remote control now controls them all. The other remote controls will now control random sets. That controls three, that controls three, that controls two. So all that work we did to make them all unique has been wiped out because somebody pressed uh, speed minus speed plus. Now, you know, that might be something you have self-control over, but keep in mind, um, if your neighbor gets one of these remotes and presses speed plus speed minus in any of your units in range, they're gonna reset. And what you have to do is go through the house, unplug the power to anything you don't wanna reset, uh, reset the one. Now keep in mind, um, as I said, this one's a little different. He usually likes to have the power reset when you do this. So there's one. And we're going to unplug him. We're going to un unplug in two. We're going to press B plus, B minus. We're going to unplug him. Switch two and three. <laughs> we're going to do three. B plus and minus. And we're going to go ahead and, and unplug him and do four and plus minus. And let's see if we got lucky and on the first reprogram everything works uh, appropriately here. So here's one. Here's the other one. So we actually got lucky. Now, some of you might look at this and say, wow, I can make them all work the same off of one remote. That works fine for a bit, but what generally happens is one receiver doesn't pick up the signal, then they're out of sequence. Um, it's actually very common, more common than you think. I have these sitting here right next to each other, and uh, it's not uncommon that I can make them go out of signal. So it's uh, uh, you can try it if you like, but just be prepared to go pull the plug on one or keep pressing the buttons to get them back in signal. And certainly if you're using some of these uh, fancy advanced features with flashing and um, yeah, strobe functions and other things, you know, getting them all to follow the exact same command from one remote, uh, it may not always work, but uh, hey, don't let me talk you out of it. Uh, feel free to try it. So remember, the key here is um, you the only one that can have power within range is the one you want to be on that remote. Uh, if anything else hears it when you press the buttons, uh, you're going to walk by and all of a sudden that remote's not going to work.
and you can play this battle back and forth of who's programming who. It's kind of unfortunate that it, you know, after the first five seconds, it continues to wait for a program. If it only did it for five seconds, you'd have some protection. So uh, they're, uh, they're all labeled the same. Um, you can get these labels. They're probably pre-printed, and multiple manufacturers may use them. So what you get from each one may be a little different. Um, I did buy this one and the white one over here from different suppliers uh, in different parts of the world. And um, you can see that uh, they're both behaving the same. So it's po probable that this board is very common. Um, I've taken them apart. There's pretty much one controller chip on there. Anyways, that's how you reprogram them. And uh, that's how you mess up your programming. So uh, best of luck.